level as well. What's that transition like from a national level to international? What are the hiccups? What are the challenges? What did you have to sort of adjust to make that move from a national level to succeeding at the international level? Initially, I mean, it was great to be able to train in India, but as I was getting better, um, I felt like I had to go abroad because this, the level of coaching in India is not up to the mark um, as it is abroad. So I've, I train a lot in Egypt where some of the best players in the world train. And uh, predominantly my whole journey has kind of been on my own where I have had to travel on my own without a coach, without a physio. And I think those things make a huge difference um, in you know, playing at the best level consistently because a lot of other players and their countries kind of send them with a the coach, send them with a the physio. And uh, so I've had to kind of you know, shortlist my team, but obviously they've not been able to travel with me. And so I think the fact that they've helped me, you know, along the way and that I've had to get out of my comfort zone more often than not uh, to, to be the best, to compete with the best, you know, that helped me, you know, win medals um, at uh, international events. But I definitely think it could have been a lot better if we get the kind of support from a very younger age. Thank you. And let me get to the, you know, the question that we all want to really discuss and debate. And Vandana Ji, I'll sort of come to you. Uh, you know, you've, uh, you know, represented India at the highest levels, uh, you know, the hat-trick against South Africa. I mean, I think none of us will ever forget that. Of course, as, as, a, as a viewer, I'll obviously not forget the moment where we took that 1-0 lead against Argentina, but things changed. From your perspective, you know, aapne itna khela hai, itna dunia dekha hai, like, what is that difference? Why is India not really performing as good as it should or could at the international level? What are some of these obstacles that, and across, not just hockey, but across sports, what does India need to do collectively as a society, as players, as teams, as administrators, to sort of break that barrier? Uh, actually, when uh, I started, uh, there were a lot of difficulties uh, uh, se, matlab, 12 years ago. So, slowly, slowly, we went to Tokyo, so there was a lot of loss. दो साल में जो बहुत ज़्यादा लॉस हुआ, but उस टाइम पे जो पूरा इंडिया और मोस्ट ऑफ़ मतलब एक फैमिली हमारी टीम भी है, इसके लिए हम लोग टीम गेम खेलते हैं, तो उन्होंने काफी सपोर्ट किया स्टाफ का, सब बहुत ज़्यादा ओलंपिक से पहले हार्ड वर्क कर रहे थे, तो उस टाइम पे मतलब मेरे पापा भी चले गए, तो वो टाइम पे ये था कि बहुत ज़्यादा मेरे लिए भी डिफिकल्ट था, तो मैंने चॉइस किया था कि मुझे टीम बहुत ज़्यादा हार्ड वर्क कर रही है, तो टीम के साथ रहना है, और खेलने जाना तो वो टाइम ये था कि मेरा ओलंपिक भी मिस हो सकता था, वो वो टाइम पे जो हमारे कोचेज और टीम ने जो सपोर्ट किया, जो हार्ड वर्किंग था टीम का, सो वही था और जो हैट्रिक क्या है कि मतलब जो हमेशा हार्ड वर्क किया है तो वो टाइम यही सोच के खेला था कि टीम के लिए कुछ करना है जस्ट जो भी हार्ड वर्क किया है वो आज टीम के लिए काम आए और जो अर्जेंटीना मैच के बाद जो भी कुछ हुआ था तो वो एक उस पर ध्यान नहीं देना चाहिए वो वो क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली मैं इग्नोर ही करती हूँ बट ये रहता है कि अगर बोल रहे हैं तो पूरे इंडिया ने इतना सपोर्ट किया वो टाइम पे कि मतलब वो बहुत अच्छा लगा है कि एक प्लेयर के साथ हमेशा पूरा इंडिया खड़ा रहता है कि उसको पता है कि प्लेयर की स्ट्रगलिंग क्या होती है और स्पेशली हॉकी में कोई भी प्लेयर मतलब बहुत अच्छी फैमिली से नहीं होता वो बहुत स्ट्रगल करके एक अच्छे लेवल तक पहुँचता है और उसको बहुत ज़्यादा हार्ड वर्क करना पड़ता है तो उसमें टीम ने बहुत ज़्यादा सपोर्ट किया है no, wonderful. And कल रात को रानी जी से बात हो रही थी कि about आजकल game इस level तक पहुंच गया कि audience भी मतलब failure को भी celebrate कर रही कि अगर if you have performed, if you have given your best, audience भी support कर रही है and that's good to see. But आपके हिसाब से as as a team, as 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 a you know as organisations, what are those one or two things जो अलग करना पड़ेगा अगर हमें you know अगले Olympics में अगले World Champions में अच्छा करना पड़ेगा ऐसी क्या चीजें हैं जो दूसरी टीम कर पाती है या उनके पास कुछ सुविधाएं हो जो हमारे पास शायद से ना हो काफी भी काफी चेंज हो चुका है मतलब पहले से जब हम लोगों ने 2017 में हम लोगों ने एशिया कप में गोल्ड लिया था उसके बाद से काफी चेंज हुआ है कि हम लोगों की मतलब जो ट्रेनिंग डाइट्स हर चीज से हम लोगों ने फोकस किया है और सोशल मीडिया पे हम लोग जब हम लोग कंपटीशन में रहते हैं तो उतना फोकस नहीं कर पाते क्योंकि हमारा फोकस थोड़ा हट जाता है कंपटीशन से तो वही उस पे हम लोग ध्यान देते हैं और जो हमारी डाइट और सब चीज रहती है माइंडफुलनेस के लिए हर चीज साइकोलॉजिस्ट तो काफी ट्रेन हम लोग हम लोगों को किया जाता है आई नाउ गेट टू द 
uh, the athletes from this millennium, the, the, who have a lot of support from Gen Z, Manu, Meholi, just want to get to you. You know, you're the athletes who are, you know, performing at the highest level. You all have, you know, uh, you all are seeing, uh, you know, getting exposed to sports uh, at a very different level. I want to get your perspective and maybe Meholi, I'll start with you. Firstly, congratulations on the three goals that you won recently. You know, what is the sort of sporting environment that you're seeing? And, you know, from a youngster, you know, who's obviously, you're about to hopefully break many barriers in the world of sport. What are certain things that you feel that is preventing India from breaking that barrier? And what do we need to do to sort of win more medals at, at the highest level? Um, I think the one important thing to win medals in all sports and Olympics is the all show, sports should be supported equally because whenever uh, after Olympics uh, the uh, sports which w won medal there they get the highlight and it's all been showing there and the full support has been given there but what about the other sports that has to be given the same support to win medal in the next Olympics whenever one Olympic is done we focus on the next because of course it's like every day every hour we put in efforts every athletes give their best in each and every day it's not only while we are training but it's always in the it's a different kind of lifestyle for me personally i was not born in that lifestyle nobody is born in that lifestyle we have to uh, learn that we have to uh, introduce ourselves to a different routine to a different lifestyle and we have to maintain and improve ourselves in each and every day. So in doing that, we need the best support as much as we can get so that we don't have to look behind us and think that if we have the support or if we have to do something uh, other than which we ourselves have to do for our own routine so that we can be with ourselves and improve ourselves in each and every day. So I think this is one thing which still needs to be improved and um, it has already improved than before and that's very uh, appreciable and but I think each sport is equally important maybe it's an Olympic event or not and each athlete deserves to be respected and supported equally. Fair enough no I think definitely I think we need a lot more attention and support for all the sports and we can't just sort of be uh, zooming into just one or two specific sports or specific events. Uh, Manu, your thoughts on this, what do we need to do differently? So, um, I think what Mayuli said, um, I support that, that uh, the culture is developing in India, but the thing is there is um, some kind of difference in some sports and the other sports. Like in shooting, I would give you an example that we have good plenty of very good shooters in our country but then when they are not in the team in the seniors when they are not in the team they are not supported they do not have the fin financial stability and everything uh, and because of which um, the job offers and everything they do not have that because of which um, eventually they have to leave the sport even if they are good they are bound to leave because they are not uh, financially stable and other thing that i would say is the consequences after you win or you lose a big game, the consequences now that social media has grown, the, consequen uh, the consequences has risen. So I think it's the fear of the consequence. If we win, this will happen. If we lose, then probably the people will, uh, I mean, take bad notes about it and maybe criticize us. So the consequences and the support system, I would say. No, two wonderful points. I think one is the element of the support system to ensure that the basic financial incentives are there so that the basics are taken care of and of course the consequences i think that's a wonderful point mukul i'm going to ask you your perspective you from the you come from the corporate side firstly once again thanks to you and the tatas for you know doing what you continue to do across sports i think to meholi's points i think the tatas are one such organization that sort of ensured that the support has come through multiple sports not just one or two not just cricket uh, to be specific uh, as a sports administrator, you've been obviously seeing, you know, with Jamshedpur FC, you're obviously uh, as part of the sporting excellence group that you lead. What are your thoughts that what does corporate India need to do? I mean, we have a separate session uh, later this evening on that particular topic, but your lens as an administrator, as a corporate executive, what eludes uh, 
the medal at the highest level. So thanks for the question. Firstly, I would say that as Mr. Chanakya had mentioned, uh, at Tata Steel, sports is a way of life. So I would not stress much more upon what other corporates should do rather than what we are doing. So as far as Jamshedpur is concerned, as Tata Steel is concerned, we run close to 19 odd disciplines, but we focus on five Mike. sports, five particular sports, which we think that, you know, instead of spreading ourselves thin, we should basically be focusing on those sports and we work in the developmental side of the sport, not so much on the commercial side. So we have academies which actually uh, focus on creating, picking up young talent at a grassroots level and making champions out of them. So we have examples in archery, football, hockey, athletics and sport climbing now. So in archery particularly, we have not only uh, groomed somebody at the uh, national level, but we have also created world champion. We have Deepika, we have uh, Komalika who is now the world youth champion. All this, everything of this makes us proud. In a total, we have actually created close to 42 odd Arjuna bodies. Now that makes us very, very, very proud. And when we talk about it, we don't actually tom on this so much. But at the same time, this is something that we should be known that, you know, we don't work on the commercial side so much, but in terms of the development side. As far as we are concerned, we'll continue to work in this space. Uh, I'll give you one small uh, note on what, how we are working towards getting it to the next level. In Rio Olympics, uh, Deepika was very close. And uh, typically, just before the Olympics, in month of May, she peaked and was close to a world record and we were very, very sure that we will actually get there in terms of medal and we thought we will get it there. Unfortunately, she could not make it and we thought that there's a little more thing that we need to do beyond what is already being done. That is uh, right from grooming or putting out a good coach and infrastructure. We thought that uh, we should have a sports science intervention and that's when we started a high performance center back in Jamshedpur. And uh, just to see to it that, you know, right from now what we do is we basically have 150 odd elite athletes who work in various academies with us who are being groomed for national duties. We see to it that we have regular assessments to see to it that typically right from the physical or mental abilities, you assess them, take them to the next level. You see to it that you condition them in a way that they don't get injured very easily because injury is part of a sportsman's life. You stretch, athletes keep stretching themselves. And in case you get injured, you see to it that you come back to the field and fit to play a little early. So these are things that we are trying to do as far as a corporate response is concerned and trying to see that make this sport or other athletes. We will not, nobody can guarantee a medal, but we'll see to it that the probability is enhanced. So that's what we do. No, fantastic. I think the, the world needs to know about the 42 Arjuna awardees and the process that you follow. As you said, you can't guarantee the medals, but you can sort of definitely focus on the process, which hopefully, uh, you know, to Mehuli's point and to Manu's point, that, that hopefully many more corporates will go down this path to provide the requisite support. Orinja, you know, we were talking about, I think just, I think uh, Manu's point sort of made a lot of sense about consequences. You know, players have to deal with so much pressure the trolls, as well as because of players' personal backgrounds, etc., people have to deal with uh, the consequences. We were talking about it last evening, and you had a few questions for Manu uh, Vandana. So, uh, Vandana ji, what you said, you ignore the question. When you were outside, you were standing in your house, the whole country was standing with you. So, how did you come out? Actually, जब हम लोग खेलने के लिए गए थे तो मुझे पता ही नहीं था कि वो सब हो रहा है, because हम लोगों के जो social medias वगैरह मतलब phone उतना use नहीं कर रहे थे वो time पे, as a team, as a मतलब पूरा staff हम लोगों ने मिलके decide किया था क्योंकि कुछ sacrifice करने के बाद ही हम लोग कुछ वो मिलता है, तो वही था कि जो hard working किया है तो हमें मुझे उतना नहीं पता था कि ये सब हो रहा है, तो उसके बाद में पता चला कि ये सब हुआ मैंने जैसे फोन ऑन किया उसके बाद में पता चला ये सब हो रहा है तो बहुत हर्ट हुआ ये सुनके तो इसलिए मैं इस चीज को सुन सुनना और मतलब देखना नहीं चाहती कि आज मेरे साथ हुआ मतलब मेरी फैमिली के साथ हुआ कल को किसी और फैमिली के साथ होगा सो इग्नोर करती हुई है कि क्योंकि एक प्लेयर के जो स्ट्रगल होता है वो पीछे का वो कोई भी नहीं जानता जो उसकी फैमिली करती है या उस वो क्या-क्या सुन के आगे बढ़ते हैं बट जब छोटी सी गलती के बाद में वो पूरा सब कुछ होता है तो सबसे ज़्यादा मैं पीएम मोदी सर और सभी पूरे हॉल इंडिया को थैंक्स बोलना चाहती हूँ कि उन उन्होंने इतना ज़्यादा सपोर्ट किया है कि मैं मतलब आज खड़ी हूँ और जो हमारी टीम थी उस टाइम पे वो भी एक एक साथ खड़े हुए थे तो काफी अच्छा लगा 
my question to Manu. So after the trolls in the social media, how did you come up? Because she had a f fallout with the, uh, the people attacked her house, but yours was on social media, people told you there were mockings, there were uh, severe attacks. How did you come out of it? So firstly, again, <clears throat> being an athlete, we barely use phones, uh, especially in the competitions, which is good, definitely. And um, as for the criticism, I would say there are people, <coughs> Sorry. Uh, we have haters, but then again, we have so many people that support us, no matter we do a well or bad. Uh, I don't think there's any athlete who wouldn't want to win when uh, on any stage, actually national ho chai, Olympic ho chai, Asian games ho, koi bhi harna nahi chata hai. Everyone wants to win. And the same was for me, I also wanted to win, but then, uh, Luck plays a very big role, I would say. So, I just put the criticism aside and see on the brighter side, there are so many people um, who supported me on my baddest, bad days. And uh, so, yeah, I came out of it stronger and my family was with me, so. That's rather mature, Manu, and I'm sure the medals will come. Luck will be on your side. Uh, Joshna, I'm going to come to you, you know, uh, let's talk about the sporting journey of women and the evolution of that. You know, you've obviously, we discussed about, you know, your journey. And now that you look at younger players, let's say an Ahana coming up, has, has that environment changed for young girls, for women? What are some of their sort of roadblocks and challenges? And how has that changed from the time you uh, came up versus, let's say, someone like Ahana who is now, uh, you know, coming up the ranks? Uh, so, like I said earlier, when, when I was coming up, there was really no support and, um, you know, I had to fight every day to, to keep proving myself uh, even more. And I think today, of course, it's changed where there's, you know, a lot more awareness, there are a lot more, like, kind of systems in place where if you do well enough, you will get support and, you know, you get cash incentives um, for winning medals and all of that. Uh, but I do think that, like today, still the biggest roadblock is um, getting financial stability, uh, especially in a sport like squash, because uh, it doesn't pay you that well when you, even on the pro tour. So truly, we play squash because we're very passionate about it. Um, but yeah, I think because a couple of days ago, uh, two girls on the Indian team were like, you know, can you help us get like sponsors to play because. Uh, they need to go on the pro tour to really uh, move up the rankings and, and get better because the only way we can win a medal at big games is what we do throughout the year playing the other tournaments. You know, people forget that we actually have to play about 10, 12 tournaments a year to be at that level that we can play at the Asian Games and win a medal there. And so that support kind of lags a little bit. And of course, for me, in my position, yes, I do get that support, but I had to work for 15, 20 years to get that support. And I feel like today, the younger generation who are so excited about sport, who, who train really hard, who are playing really well, like they really need to be encouraged and supported from the time they're really young, like financially, um, a good coaching system, all of that. And I think if that can be given to them early where they have no tension, no worries, and they can just get on court and play, I think they'll do their best for us. Absolutely. Wonderful. Mehuli, I'll come to you. You spoke about support as well. I mean, as an athlete, let's maybe give us the positive side. What are some of the positive changes that you're seeing in the sporting ecosystem in India in terms of support that probably you are getting and other female athletes are getting, which perhaps maybe a decade before was not possible? Well, uh, I would say like recently how the beginners and the grassroots level has been supported with all of the schemes, let's say Kelo India, or uh, how our national camps are being held on right now. It's a whole lot of difference. And uh, whenever we go to the internationals or any competitions, we have a youth support system right now, which I, when I started back in my days, I didn't have that much. And I didn't have so much of knowledge. I had to find out it on a, my own. Now everyone knows everything and they are given the knowledge on the beginning days. And it's so good. And um, the awareness and their knowledge is very important to play a big match. Because whenever you go to an international, it's an it's a overwhelming feeling. It's a, there are so many challenges to face up. 
um, uh, the food and everything, you face challenges. So whenever you get that support and even in camps or whatsoever, when there's a full support system there behind you, you don't have to think much and you can work much better and you can, uh, all the things are being taken care of so that you can perform your best on the given day, on your competition day. And even if you don't perform on that day, there are a, a support system to support you right there so that you can perform the next day. So I think this change has been uh, made and it's very good. And uh, I tell my ju uh, juniors and my friends, like back in my days, this were not the things we didn't got these opportunities. You guys are getting this. It's a, it's a very lucky feeling, it's, it's very good. And uh, it's wonderful days and hopefully in future we will get much more support and uh, we will see much more changes uh, in the near future. No, wonderful. Cheers to more support from all around. We definitely need that. Mukul, the question to you, I mean, obviously that we all know what the Tatas have done for, you know, Indian sport. We obviously have at a policy level, we have the CSR budget that a lot of associations and uh, institutions are tapping onto. My question is, you know, if you were to talk to encourage other corporates, other startups to support the sporting ecosystem, what would be your message? What framework should they look at it? Because as you said, you know, it's not easy to calculate a pure ROI out of this and it's a long journey. What would be your message to other Indian corporates and startups who want to support the sporting ecosystem? So I would say that we are relatively better placed because, you know, we have our setups in uh, tier two towns, tier three towns. Many of the corporates who operate out of bigger cities uh, do not have the advantage of infrastructure. But then maybe having presence in tier two and tier three towns and developing that, I think maybe investing, because these are, these are places where you'll not never get an ROI. It is just purely and thankfully investment in sports is part of your CSR now. One can educate and uh, make people aware that you can actually spend that money towards development, towards starting early, even educate the education system. Because I think many a times we lose a lot of sporting talent to education, the way the students are right now, apart from doing their schooling, to going to their tuitions, they hardly have any time to play. So that being said, typically, yes, starting early, one can actually start investing in school sports. I think that's one area which I think I would request all the corporates to spend on or others invest in. Uh, that will many, many, that will actually bring out a lot of talent. So that is one thing. And second thing is, uh, as I had one of the colleagues sitting on that saying, you need a lot of support when you're not doing too well. Yeah. Uh, because you're actually going to lose an athlete in that bargain. You have to see to it that everybody is supported till the end. And that's something that, you know, many a times you get a lot of rewards and awards only if you win. I think we have to help them through the journey. And uh, that's where I think all the corporates need to pull up their sleeves and come in. A wonderful message. And I'm really happy that at RepSports, if you look at the, the board behind, there are corp large corporates, there are young startups that are backing uh, this conclave and are backing various initiatives uh, that, you know, Rev Sports and various other organizations that are driving in the world of sports. You, you brought about a good point about supporting when the chips are down. And Vandana Ji, I want to get back to you, you know, dealing with failure, right? Uh, you know, whether it's the Olympics, whether at any level up, when you have a stage, you have a failure in the process. You have said that you know, follow your career. You know, everyone played hard, but the result didn't get. How do you rekindle the love for sport? How do you pick yourselves up from there? Ki wapas kal se dubara, wo mehnat karni, wo motivation kahan se aata hai? How do you deal with that? Uh, actually, we have a lot of people who are low feel, so we have a lot of people who are in our teammates. अगर टीममेट से नहीं बात करनी तो कोच से बात करते हैं तो वो हम लोग को समझाते हैं बोलते हैं कि एक प्रेशर होता है और प्रेशर को हैंडल कैसे करना है तो वही है कि उस प्रेशर से हम लोग डाउन भी जा सकते हैं और अच्छा भी खेल सकते हैं तो वो हमें समझना बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है कि हम लोग प्रेशर में कैसे खेल सकते हैं सो so, यही है कि हम इस चीज़ से कि कोच से बात करके या प्लेयर से बात करके थोड़ा मोटिवेशन होता है या हमारा थोड़ा सा कुछ भी फोकस इधर होता है तो हम लोग बात करते हैं आपस में बैठ के तो अच्छा लगता है उससे हाँ जी बिल्कुल मानो योर पर्सपेक्टिव यू नो यू स्पोक अबाउट लक प्लेज अ बिग पार्ट एंड वेन यू हैव प्रिपेयर्ड सो हार्ड यू गो टू दैट बिग स्टेज एंड यू नो लेडी लक स्ट्राइक्स एंड थिंग्स डोंट गो योर वे हाउ डू यू सॉर्ट ऑफ डील विद दैट 
I'm still learning. Um, so I would say um, I've had plenty of ups and downs, uh, plenty of very, very good moments, wow moments. Uh, but I'm still learning how to deal with, um, excuse my language, but shitty days and um, shitty luck. So I think I have a lot to learn from my seniors when it comes to um, dealing with low days. And the most thing, the, uh, mo most of the times what I remind myself is why am I doing this? Am I doing this for the outcome or am I really doing this because I enjoy it? Because I really want to shoot. So, um, and then I get my answer that I want to play I want to play and which is why I am just shooting because only I want to. No matter what the outcome is, I will keep shooting anyways. So, um, maybe just take notes of what went wrong. Kya sahi hua, kya galat hua, and then uh, um, use it or um, analyze it and then training accordingly. So, yeah, that's what I do. Kudos to you and hopefully the law of averages, you know, bad luck ka utna hi quota hota hai. Hopefully uske aage, you know, the, there isn't too much bad luck in all your journeys. Or enjoy, we were talking about, you know, you know corporate India support for uh, sports. Obviously, as a media house, you all have done so much. You know, we were chatting about, and I think you had a question for Mukul around the role of corporate India, and again, whether in sports like football or any other sport. Mukul ji, uh, uh, Tata's have been associated with football from the very beginning with the Tata Football Academy, and then after a gap, a comeback with Jamshedpur FC. So how do you see Indian football in the future? So yeah, a very difficult question, I must say. <laughs> so we have almost a 100 years uh, journey as far as football is concerned. And thanks to you and uh, thanks to um, Mohan Bagani, Bengal, who have been like, carrying that uh, torch for Indian football. Yes, we had a low. And uh, Tata Steel particularly has been supporting football when actually it was not a sport which was people did not relate it with so much, but we took that step and we started the first residential academy in Tata Football Academy. And since then, we have actually had more, more than 150 internationals who have been you know, coming out of that academy. Uh, Indian football, where it stands today, we are evolving. Uh, there's a lot to catch up. But at the same time, a lot is being done. But the pace at which the European and North American football is growing, uh, I think there's a lot of distance that we need to cover. And uh, we are, all, we, you don't have competition in India as such. Uh, we don't look upon cricket as a competition. It's just an elder cousin who's doing pretty well. But uh, when it comes to football, it's so much difficult that you have an EPL match televised, and parallelly you have an ISL match televised, and you see the gaps and the precision and uh, the way the ball is being carried. So you have a little bit of struggles. The game has obviously moved up from where it was, uh, with a lot of investment which is coming in. but. Uh, in time to come, one good thing that I've been noticing is the amount of audience that is managed to draw to the stadium, which wasn't there 10 years back. So obviously, there is attraction. Uh, it is a growing sport. Uh, it will take a while. I think we have a distance to travel. So I think it's a matter of time. But yes, it will do well. But like you said, elder cousin doing well in the field of money. Cricket is a field of uh, elder cousin, which is doing excellent. But unlike cricket, sir, in football, there is no profit. You being a corporate house, you are investing in a football team, you are not getting any profit. Whereas if you see in I teams in IPLs, well, the number of profits, the amount of profits is huge. So you, I think I must share this with you. Typically, IPL also took seven years to turn positive. Now imagine a game of that popularity taking seven years to turn positive. We always thought that it's positive from day one. It wasn't. Second thing, we have to learn a lot from cricket. Cricket wasn't what it was today. Uh, there was a time when Mr. Dalmia used to buy airtime to have this telecast on television, so cricket could be seen by many more people. Now, as a sport, as a federation, as a league, with administrators, we have to learn a lot from cricket, how they made it popular in a properly commercial sport. Uh, so we have an example there. Of course, it will take time. And the investments in cricket and football are very different. And investment in Kabaddi is much, much different. But at the same time, we have good examples. Kabaddi, a sport, nobody thought that it would be so commercially viable. It is doing well. Football will take its own time. I think slowly and steadily, what we were making three years back, 
it's bettered from what it <laughs> was then. Uh, I think we'll have to wait and watch. And uh, the kind of glory that is involved, I think we are there for that right now. So, and we're hoping for better days. Absolutely important to play the long game. All right, we're coming to the fag end of this particular session. And, you know, the road to Paris 24, we're not too far away. I'm going to request each of my esteemed panelists to just give you one or two words as to what does India need to do to win more medals than it did at Tokyo. Vandana Ji, starting with you, one or two words that India needs to do differently or better to win more medals at Paris. या हम लोग अभी जैसे हार्ड वर्क कर रहे हैं तो आने वाले टाइम में यही हम लोगों ने अभी टोक्यो में फोर्थ फिनिश किया था तो हम इतना ज़्यादा वर्क करेंगे एज ए टीम मिलके कि हम लोग मतलब मेडल लाने की पूरा कोशिश करेंगे पेरिस में ऑल राइट हार्ड वर्क जोशन ऑफ कोर्स वी नो स्क्वाश इज इन देर बट योर थॉट्स ऑफ विशेज फॉर द स्पोर्टिंग इको सिस्टम फ्रॉम इंडिया वॉट डू वी नीड टू डू डिफरेंटली I definitely think uh, you know support for an athlete from the beginning, from the time they're really young, and of course you know the discipline that comes with being a, a professional uh, athlete and having a really good team around you. I think that really helps. Yeah. All right, Manu. Financial and mental stability, I would say. All right, to the point, Mehuli. I would definitely agree with Manu and. Um, I think support on each and every daily basis, which is very important. And even if the days are not good, the support right there is very important to perform on the next day. So I think without any expectations of outcomes, we really should put all the efforts and uh, all the support on the preparation right here, right now, because this is the time. We are running out of time. Wonderful focus of the process. Mukul, your parting thoughts? So yes, as administrators, we just have to ensure that uh, we make this environment conducive and try to supplement in the best possible way so that athletes can excel. And as Manu said, maybe try to chip in by making them more comfortable mentally and physically. Thanks. Thank you so much. I wish all of you all the very best. To me, I think the summary for this session really is, it's a long journey. We only have 35 medals. Hopefully, you know, it, there comes a day where every Olympics we win double digit medals and you know, that count you know, crosses 100 uh, before we turn 100 as a nation. Uh, and again, a big thank you, Vandana Ji, Joshna, uh, Manu, Mehuli, Mukul, for all the great work that you're doing. Orange for supporting us at Ref Sports and at Pratidin, the great work that you guys do to cover the sports. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for all the extreme panelists. On, and uh, could I please request uh, someone to, yes, sorry? Yes, of course. I think if we have time, we'll take a one or two questions. of a comment than a question. Vandana ji, you said that the family is not so good. You were thinking that the economics is not so good. Because the family that has given Vandana Kataria to this country, that family is very high from many families. You have made that tricolor go up. We go to the Rashtra Gaan. We celebrate and we will always do it. So the family is very high. It can't be economically, but you will do it. Tokyo ke baad hamla, hamne wo badlao dekha hai. So that is why we are celebrating you here. Otherwise, we would have celebrated all those bigots who had attacked your family. They are not being celebrated, you are. So your family is way up there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any one yeah. other question? Yes. Any? Yes. My uh, question was for Like, I remember in 2020 Tokyo Olympics, when there was a pistol malfunction in Noida Film City, and my editor said, it's a technical breakdown. I've done it a little bit here and there. But when it was happened at that time, when you were there, how was your mental frame? Because suddenly you see your, all your hard work vanish in the blink of an eye. So how did you deal with it in the next couple of weeks or couple of months? How was it for you? So honestly, I will share my experience with you all. The Olympic experience. My first match, in which I was very confident about everything because I was well prepared, everything was set. But the least thing that I had expected was uh, the malfunction. That too in, um, like it's a one in, once in a million things because air pistol is not a very common thing. So um, 
उस टाइम पे आई डिड नॉट पैनिक एट ऑल बिकॉज मैच के बीच में था आई सेटल्ड आई डिस्कस इट विद माई कोच एंड वी फिक्स इट बट द टाइम लेफ्ट वॉज वेरी वेरी शॉर्ट एंड आई रश्ड इन टू शूटिंग एंड द लास्ट शॉट आई शॉट वॉज इन आई थिंक ट्वेंटी फाइव सेकेंड्स फॉर द लास्ट शॉट सो आई वॉज टेरीफाइड ऑन द लास्ट शॉट उसके बाद आई रियलाइज आई डिड नॉट मेक टू द फाइनल्स विद टू पॉइंट्स बिकॉज आई रश्ड एंड एवरी थिंग वॉज माई माई पल्स वेंट हाई एंड आई वॉज नॉट रियली एबल टू थिंक फ्राम द सेंटर एंड द नेक्स्ट डे आई हैड अनदर मैच आई वॉज नॉट एबल टू स्लीप बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉन्सिक्वेंसिज एंड एवरी थिंग दैट माइट गो गो ऑन सो आई वॉज नॉट एबल टू स्लीप बिकॉज ऑफ ऑल द थॉट्स आर गोइंग इन साइड माई ब्रेन एंड या द नेक्स्ट डे ऑल्सो आई वॉज नॉट मेंटली वेरी स्टेबल दैट डे बिकॉज अगेन द बेट्स एंड पीसेज ऑफ द प्रीवियस मैच वो गोइंग ऑन एंड आई डि नॉट हैव एनी um supported that point of time but yes i would say what um doesn't break us makes us uh, makes us stronger so um, it was just an experience and i'm not giving up so i have a very long journey to go ahead i'm only 21 and i have many many more olympics many many more uh, um sports athletes and many more competitions to take part in so i hope uh, we i'll mm, get more experiences and pretty much win more lose some yeah we'll be here to support and we'll be here to celebrate those medals manu keep up the good work we have time for one last question before we fill it. yes someone from the audience could we have the mic please morning and uh, it's a pleasure and privilege to be a part of this session and my respect to all of you on the stage uh, i work in the field of applied behavioral economics and my question to all of you and either if you can answer it as professional sports person when you feel that when you're performing at a situation where you're performing for the nation and the stakes are so high suppose either of you manu josh or anyone when you know that you have suppose you have to one shot to shoot and that shot will win you the gold be it at the olympics be it at the national level be it at the international level how do you train your mind to defocus and just focus on the target because that is where i we feel that you know the mind plays a very very important role in eventual outcome of sports right joshna would you want to take that Um well I think uh I can only speak for my sport it's obviously very different in shooting when you just have that one shot and you either make it or break it uh for squash obviously it's um you know we play match after match after match and uh, when you're playing for India it's uh, it's a different feeling altogether as opposed to me when I play on the on the professional tour or I'm playing for myself at at individual tournaments Uh there's definitely a lot more pressure but I also feel a lot more supported when I go for a, a team event because you know there's a coach there's a physio there's a manager so my job on court actually is a lot easier because I just have to worry about you know playing and ultimately this is what we train for right like for years and years this is what we train for for that one moment and there's always going to be pressure there's always going to be you know challenges and i think it's just embracing it and you know getting comfortable with that with that feeling and and ultimately that's what actually brings us the joy is that we are training day in day out to be able to you know play for india win medals for our country so i really look at it as a great honor and an opportunity for me to be the best that i can be in my sport thank you joshna ladies and gentlemen a big round of applause for our champions on the stage and let's pledge that every time that they take to the field we're there to support irrespective of the result we now conclude this session and i would like to request mr kostub jha from uh, coca cola to please come up on stage and felicitate our athletes and my fellow panelists
Thank you so much. A great session. And now we move to the third session and it's a big one. It's a big one because we have two of the most celebrated athletes